Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here with Stuby from Lucky Boys Confusion, Mr. Miz, and the Infusions. And I'm also here with Christian Glom from Ill Rendition. Um, I just want to kick it off by saying, if you're on Facebook, I have posted a link to a fundraiser for Jake Hirsch and his family. If you know the band Fubar, he's going through a pretty hard situation right now. And uh, if you guys can donate anything, that'd be great. If you're on YouTube, it'll be in the comments. Also, the Harbor Boys on their page are donating a, uh, a guitar. They're, fun, they're raffling it off for money to raise for his family. So uh, get involved in all that. I'll send all the links here on the podcast. Uh, what's up with you guys? What's up, Stuby? What's up, Christian? Uh, I just, I'll start with saying I, I didn't know him, but uh, as somebody that's gone through this, you know, and a lot, I mean, most people have, after the age of 25, you know, 30 has, has gone through something like that, but uh, it's never easy. And I just feel for everybody that's going through it. So, uh, but what's up with me? I just got back from a, a trip, um, like a, a, my regular day job stuff and just got back yesterday and took some time to rest up and uh, get some energy for this. So here, here I am. And, um, and uh, nice to meet you, man, uh, Chris, uh, Christian. Likewise, likewise. Um, and yeah, I want to uh, touch on the thing about Jake. Uh, we had just, we had just played with uh, FUBAR last Saturday and, you know, unfortunately he's, his, uh, his health, didn't allow him to be there and like leading into it, we weren't sure if he was going to be able to make it out there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we just want to send love to our, our FUBAR family and Jake and his family. Um, and then as far as, as far as me, um, we just got back from tour. We just did a two week run with the meager Kings. Um, so just getting back and kind of getting back into the daily swing of things here back in Jersey. I mean, I, I loved, I loved the live streams you did on uh, Rainwater Studios. Oh, that was, that was such a cool spot, man. Keenan, dope, Keenan running that thing over there. He's a man. We, uh, we had a good time at uh, Rainwater. Yeah. They're, they're really, really good guys. Hey, Stubby, um, what was Riot Fest like, man? Oh, it was something else, man. Uh, you know, after, you know, at this point in time, you know, I, I'm as a veteran as they get, you know, so <laughs> yeah. like, uh, it uh have to it's something you know all of us started at whatever age uh but when you do you when you start music you you kind of don't have even when you dream about like playing like those huge things it just it it doesn't really quite sink in it's the reality isn't it's not all there um until it actually starts happening um so you know i'm I went through lots of one you know, uh, moderate success around the, uh, you know, or, um, a few years back, but to, at 20, after 25 years of being in the same band, you know, with the same members, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a head trip, man, to be like, oh my God, it, people still care. And it's one thing to get, like, just get on the show because I don't know, you're friends with the promoter or, you know, you're, 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 uh, you know, you just get in somehow, but, uh, it was nice to actually have that validation of, uh, uh, getting on stage and, uh, having such an early slot, but having such a full crowd and, um, they weren't just there because they were there, uh, they were singing our words. So it was really cool. It was a, it was a great experience. It was, it was a cathartic. Uh, I was, uh, it was something I needed to do, you know, um, as I'm, come into my the twilight of my career um and I, that's not a negative thing i'm just saying it's a reality you know as a i only have so much energy i got another kid on the way you know so um yeah. as a as a as it's coming it was a nice little cap it was it was awesome so yeah to answer your question it was freaking awesome so, I, I can't yeah. imagine i i saw you on that screen what is it three stories tall yeah <laughs> i'm like i couldn't imagine if i saw myself i'd be like wow man that's got to be pretty pretty intense feeling yeah on stage i, I don't really uh, you know, as all of us, you know, we've done this, you don't always remember the experience on stage because you're kind of going through the motions and um, being in the moment is a very, they, everybody always says be in the moment, be in the moment, but it's really hard when you're trying to get through the moment, you know, right. um, you know like, so uh, I, I, I did take a few moments in, uh, I was like, but uh, I wish, I wish I would have, uh, I always say this after every show that I wish I would have taken it in more, but it's hard. It's hard when you're just trying to perform well and and give the crowd what they, you know, what they pay for. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot going on too, obviously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so trying to battle with MS and be on stage, that's, that's tough, man. Yeah, really it was tough. tough. It's tough. Um, you know, it just, yeah, that, that's what most of them are talking about. I just, I'm just want to make sure I'm, I'm delivering a good show, uh, um, while I'm sick. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Christian, what do you got coming up? Anything good? 
Um, we're actually going to be trying to get uh, some stuff written and recorded now that, um, you know, the, the summer season, you know, has, has kind of cooled off here at, at the, the old Jersey Shore and, you know, that we wrapped up the tour and everything. I think um, we're going to try to get uh, try to get an album done this this winter. I think that's really, uh, you know, where our where our focus is going to be. So I think we might, uh, you know, we're still going to be doing some like the local local shows to, to play out. But I think we're going to kind of stick close to home for a bit and just really really buckle down some new stuff get some new stuff written it's so hard to write when you're playing man you know what i mean i i like mm -hmm. write, i mean like write and record and focus because then every time you get into a practice you're practicing for the show again and you know i totally get yep. I hear that you, I, we that's why it takes so long for the you know your first album it's like it's just a combination of everything that you've been doing and then the second album is like try to do it while i'm touring <laughs> absolutely man you got I, I totally hear why you're, you're in a, a good luck with that that's gonna be awesome Thank and it's you. cold so it might as well, as well stay in right yeah i do i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead oh no no you're good um like i said that's basically what we're what we're thinking and um you know i kind of want to like we were talking about it um you know while we were on the road discussing like what we want to do and the direction we want to go and things like that and like i'm hoping to have enough time to write like way more than we need like you know 20 plus songs and then yeah. you know cherry pick the best ones and kind of hope to put together the the best album that we can but uh you know the goal uh it's gonna be almost to try to write like a song a day or every other day through the through the winter and then you know start the uh, recording process i guess sometime early next year and then hopefully do a drop in the spring or summer and the more you have the more you can also mix and match like mm -hmm. you know what i mean you get those moments where you're like oh man I got this song, it's in B minor, and I really need a bridge, and this song's not going to work anyway. It's in E minor. Ooh, I can move it around a little bit, change the keys. And when you have more, it's, uh, there's so much more to play with, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> having like a Dropbox <laughs> full of ideas, you oh, know, absolutely. is always uh, you, great. You know, like, it's, it's something, people are always like, oh, I need to write my album. I go, just write, just write, just write, just write. <laughs> and it'll the album will happen, because if you write, it's just going to happen. If you go into it and go like, man, I got to write six songs. You're going to stress yourself out. You know, yep. you're like, you're just all like, oh man, I need to finish these songs. No, man, just write. But that's the best advice I've ever gotten from anybody is just, just write. Just do what you do. do it. Yeah. Says the guy who's writing like, uh, what, like a 10,000 page novel or something. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that, <laughs> that's something totally different. Uh, that, that, that's, cool, that's like a venturing into something brand new and, you know, that's the same thing, though. Uh, you just like, uh, you know, I, I'll get like I'll get like a message back and uh, like, man, the book's getting too long and matter to be like, uh, -uh. right first. Oh, with it. we'll put it together after it. Cut, we'll cut later. You know, and the same thing with what, you know, what, what Christian's saying, like, dude, just write 20 songs, even if you only want 10, <laughs> you might end up with two EPs instead of one album. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, it, it, it's I love it. Um I listened to a bunch of your stuff um, uh, and um, it's, it's cool. It's uh, it reminds me a lot of like uh, kind of like what my, uh, what, not my old, I mean, I'm still in it, but like what my band did too, like uh, kind of jumping around between like ska reggae and then, and then some, just some straight punk. Um, uh, I, I like it. It's um, there. I heard some living end like kind of style of stuff there in um uh which one was that one wait hold on first i want to talk about the ghostbusters stuff which i thought was cool uh like i, I love like, it okay this i is... think there's a big ghostbusters flag behind me probably nice is. nice um well, there it is it's really i was, like, I was gonna ask a little bit about that because you know uh that's cool um my i really like let's go um thank you i like, uh, love the piano intro and then uh i like the the the, the first turnaround uh, I didn't expect that harmony guitar in there. That was pretty cool. Uh, oh. And just a good, good, uh, good hook with the great refrain. I, I, that's that's probably my favorite. Um, and did you guys do like a cover EP, like a full EP full of covers, or was that um, just a pop song? We uh we did a bunch of covers, and then um we kind of like re-released it on the same release, if that makes sense. So it yeah, kind of sure, like sure. the 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 like Spotify and iTunes called it an EP and kind of put it out in their yeah. algorithm that way but it was more or less just like we 
re-released them again so that they were all kind of in one spot. Yeah, so you just use the ISRC code and kind of put it all together. Ex exactly. Yeah. So that's you know, and then they, so they kind of just called it an EP. We didn't really plan that, but uh things are just back you know things are back to that single with the you know this was streaming and whatnot and i was like oh it's so different i said yeah if you're a music like history guy actually this is right back to where we started right we're right back to singles like it's that's how it was in the 50s you know you, you maybe put out a maxi single you know or whatever but it was all single based until the beatles changed things around Beatles, beach boys changed things around but yeah man i mean i like this whole thing it makes it kind of hard though. Sometimes like you're sitting on a bunch of songs, you just want to dump them, but you know that that's not the, that's not the, that's not the best way to get like the love. You got to kind of do it piece by piece. People, yeah. Uh, like people's uh, attention spans are shorter, you know? So yeah, it's cool. I, 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 I but I dug that stuff. Uh, the Venkman's, uh, what was it called? Venkman's, uh, like Venkman's, Revenge. Venkman's Revenge. Yeah, that was cool. I was like, uh, you know, a quick little, uh, little punk tune. Um, I wish I hadn't the song that sounded like the living end. Uh, and I mean that in the biggest compliment ever, because I, I really like those guys. It was a. Uh, you said you said to check out a bunch of tunes, but I already I already checked out most of those. But there was one that wasn't on there. Maybe it was the. I don't know, whatever, but I really liked it anyway. It's, and it's good stuff. So are you going in any like and, and I and I don't think you should. I just there's a just a question for you. Are you going more in that ska direction or are you going to do like the the punkier stuff or are you doing reggae or just going to mix it all up again so it's it's funny that you should mention that because that's that's kind of what i brought up to the guys as we were as we were approaching this um our our singles are kind of like you said all over the place you know like there's yeah. some reggae there's some straight punk there's some I mean, you know still, a little bit it of this feels and that. like it still falls into the same band and everything it doesn't feel like it's like alien uh, oh yeah, it, yeah. We we would, we we hope not, and, and thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, you're I was saying to them, like for an album, like I feel like it should be kind of cohesive, like yeah. at least in the same kind of idea. So I I kind of propose the yeah, idea idea to them um to kind of do uh like hooks on hooks, man, like that that just that catchy reggae stuff. Like I kind of want it to be just poppy and that that shit that gets stuck in your head and then you know maybe the next one down the line will be a, a punk album but i, I was mm -hmm. kind of just feeling them out and see what they thought about you know just something hooky you know and, and kind of going going that route more, so more in the pop, do... pop, pop reggae direction more like the 60s reggae kind of stuff like the the popular like that had a little bit of more of the r&b kind of flavor to the reggae I guess if you like, I don't know, like some people call it like the uh, the American reggae, you know what I mean? Like okay. I'm heavily influenced by like your Ballyhoos and your Bumpin' Uglies and Kyle Smith's of the world and, and things like that. So, you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know yeah. what exactly to call it, but, you know, I've heard people say like American reggae and I kind of like that. Uh, it's all the stuff that's influenced by Sublime. Yeah, you know, basically, Sublime more or less, in, yep. Yeah, like, in, in you know, not a knock against it. And it, Sublime was just, but I just went one, one, influenced back and they were all influenced by like the like not not the punk side of sublime the punk side of sublime was that california like descendant style stuff but mm -hmm. like uh the the reggae stuff was uh the, they were you know desmond decker uh and then like you know um uh black uhuru like the pop the pop reggae and yeah. not necessarily the 60s stuff but later stuff too but uh you know toots and the maytals they were they were big on like that that stuff that came a little bit after Marley, you know, so, and that's where that whole pop thing comes from. I mean, the slightly stupid, they were influenced by Sublime. It all really comes back to that, like, that, uh, that first reggae wave in Jamaica in the like late fifties through the sixties. And I, I feel like that's what you're doing. And I love that. And uh, one band that, one band that did this a lot, totally different genre, but they would, uh, Alice in Chains um, in the nineties would do, wow like this you know like uh, their grunge well metal metal twinged grunge sound and then just the next album would just be acoustic but like, yeah it didn't like sound, heaven but besides it didn't, you was like one of the best alice in chain songs oh, you know? yeah. but it didn't okay. sound like one of their metal grunge sounds tuned down they wrote i felt like they wrote it to be that you know, and I just mm -hmm. love that. So I like I like the idea that you got going like, hey, do let's do this pop reggae thing and then let's do this punk thing next instead of like putting it all together and then you can market it better, too. So that's awesome. Good luck to you, man. Thank you.
Yeah, I um, wish I could, I wish I could focus like that. I I I just once I went solo, I can't do. I just whatever I write, I just put out. And you know, yeah, yeah. I got nobody telling me anything, so you know, I just kind of do what I want. But yeah, we um we have something coming up. I forgot to mention um GMGT that that group I do with the uh, global music. Uh-huh. We are also going to put together, um, I talked to Christian about this earlier, maybe he's going to get involved. If you want to, Stuby, you can. We're going to do um, like a, a evening of live streams for a fundraiser for Jake also through that page. And um, we have Arlen's going to play and maybe Christian, and I'm going to talk to some others and see if they want to get involved. And we're going to try and raise money for his family that way too. I just, I had to mention it. What up, GMGT? What up, Katie? <laughs> yeah, hey, talk to, if you talk to Brad, I'll play some songs with Brad. I just don't really play. Um I mean, yeah. I, I write, but I just don't really play that much. So yeah, I can connect with Brad. I'll I'll talk to him about that after this. If he comes over, I'm I'm happy to be part of it, man. Sweet man, thank you. Yep. Got that coming up. Um, Christian, did you want to do a song or something? Oh uh, yeah, sure. I can Down? do a song if you want me to. Yeah, why not? Got the uh, got the old guitar sitting here. I think it's in tune too. There you go. Good. <laughs> Or maybe it's not. It's close. It's rock and roll. Rock and roll, man. There we go. It was the B. It's usually the G that fails you. It was the B that time. Um, Well, then I guess um, I'm going to do a a song since we're heading into the fall now that uh, I wrote about this this season. And uh, as the years went on, my number of ex-girlfriends went up and my number of hoodies went down. So uh, this is this is a song about that. Uh, it's called right Basic as Fuck. <laughs> Leaves turn from green to brown. It's time to settle down. But you can keep that shit. You won't find me around. Hands off my hoodie. That's not very nice. Stick to your white claws and pumpkin spice. You can keep rocks in your up boots and scarf. It's cuffing season. Don't give her a reason. It's be basic as fuck. It's cuffing season. Don't be the reason. She's basic as fuck. Since for love or gifts to me, it's all the same. But you'll program that way, the internet's to play. Holidays coming, designer where's not. Ain't got no money, I think you forgot. Trying to lock me down was all for not. It's cuffing season, don't give her a reason. It's be basic as fuck. It's cuffing season, don't be the reason. She's basic as fuck. You think it's automatic that I will talk to you? Only thing automatic is I'm not meant for you. It's cuffing season, don't give her a reason. It's be basic as fuck. It's cuffing season, don't be the reason. She's basic as fuck. There's one about the fall. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I checked that one out. If you have that, you have that on your uh, Apple we, and your Spotify, right? Yeah. We do. We do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Because I was like, I know this one. Yeah, that's uh, one of their big ones. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Well known. Uh, that they're uh, the third, like the connector line in the verses. That's like what I'm talking about with the toots and the maytals, with that um, like you know, you had that. It, it, it's and it's probably like subconscious, you know, because like. I'm not I'm not like you're taking the piece, but like they do these like connect, like they had like these uh, like bouncy lines, and then the third line is like the connector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like that's something that like uh, like that's what I meant by this uh, like the '60s pop reggae. Is like okay, yeah, I influences are what like 
or like you know black uhuru picked up and black uhuru picked up and sublime picked up and sublime picked up and slightly stupid picked up and we picked up and you guys you know like yep. but it, it, it all comes back to that old like that like uh because the ska stuff came up first and that was all that like bouncy stuff that like in this connector stuff that you're like doing and i hear in a bunch of your songs that came in that pop stuff and i there has to be something to do with like I feel like rock and roll, like the Chuck Berry style rock and roll, also influenced Jamaican music. Like it's almost like back and forth, right? They influenced us. We like we influenced them. Yeah, it's cool. I really like that song. Thank you, thank. You. And that's probably like the the kind of direction that we want to go with the album is like that that style there. You know, like pop that, reggae, that pop yeah. reggae. That's probably yeah. uh, cool. you know where we're leaning for the album. Sure. I now I did I do like that when you um. When you do have that pop reggae stuff, you go to do ding do ding do ding. That's for a second though, just to remind mm-hmm. everybody that you guys are punks too. Like I, I like that. <laughs> there was a there was one song in there that I was like, like, like God, I wish I, I I wrote it down, but it was like you know you played the like the poppy or reggae stuff, and then you went do 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 and back right right back to it. Just like hey, don't forget that we're this too. But you know I like That's that awesome. stuff. I think yeah. that that heavy soft dynamic is actually a big Nirvana. Oh, absolutely! You know, yeah. like that's that's really um, you know where the the heavy soft thing comes from. I, yeah, I can't lie about that's that's that a in, huge Nirvana um, thing. That was in uh, the song that starts with G. Uh, gr- okay, so I listened to Let's Go. Um, I I I see everything in letters. Sorry. Uh, so there was a song that started with G. Uh, hold on, I'll just pull it up. That one was the one that I. Heard the Nir- the Nirvana style, yeah. Oh no, my grind. There was just a G. Wow. In it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We uh, we and that, we we've been opening like every show with that song. Like we just like sure. that energy on that one. We just feel oh, like yeah. it's a good tone setter. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it's just like a, yeah. Because you don't want to. Well, no. It just depends on the vibe. But like, I can see wanting to start with something like a little bigger than the, than some of the uh, like the more reggae tunes. You can kind of get them going and bring them down a little bit, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of what we do. Like, just come out and kick them in the face real quick and be like, yeah. "Hey, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go extreme," but then we'll, we'll we'll ease you we'll ease you back down. It's almost like a, hey, everybody that's at the bar that's getting a drink, we're on, you know, like and not, yeah. not like, you know, no, we're and we're on and get your asses back here. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I miss playing live, but um, I still get two once in a while with LBC, so that's that's cool. Yeah. Um, Stuby, are you going to do, um, I know you do like a yearly thing for MS. Do you have that coming up or when is that? Yeah. Next March 11th, we're going to do uh, the charity show. Um, I got a big headliner for it this year, but I can't announce who it is yet. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, LBC will play, you know, and that's, uh, that, in, that in itself should easily sell the show out, but with this guy, uh, you know, these guys, whatever, uh, it'll be <laughs> careful. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> it'll be a it'll be a big it'll be a big addition to it. And the thing about this, those shows is it's really not about I mean, it's about the show, but it's about raising, you know, raising money for a accelerated cure project, you know. So uh, it's yeah, a little bit of a different kind of show. It's a uh, those it's special. Um, it's different. It'll be uh, uh, it, it'll be my second annual. It should be. This one should have been the fourth, but you know, COVID and all that. COVID, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, it'll it'll be great next year, and then I'll start doing them annually. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it, it should be a good show. Uh, I don't I don't have my um, I don't have my other bands booked. Like who, who other? Um, uh, I just want them all to be like a like. We don't need members that have MS in the bands. Uh, just like they're somewhere uh, somehow affected by it. Right, like family members, friends, uncle, friend. I, it doesn't yeah. matter. You just have some some kind of a connection to it. Otherwise, just be really passionate about wanting to help. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I got a list of like fifteen bands I want to play right now, and it's just hard to. Uh, people are good, man. People. Yeah, it's a good problem. People to are have. just. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you when you say. This is for a good cause, you know. Um, people forget like you know there's so much turmoil in the world and so much uh, like just so many you know we disagree on everything but when it comes to like when you go hey i'm doing this cancer charity or you're doing this ms charity or you're doing this children to help children's art in schools or something you typically don't get like well what's the 
what's the political <laughs> you know on this? You know, like man, shut the fuck up. You know, like, like, <laughs> we're talking about like how, like Republicans get sick and so do Democrats. You know, and so yeah, does everybody gets sick. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. so that's it. You know, the people come out. People's good sides come out when you do that kind of when, it, when you oh. do charity type stuff. Like, like you guys are doing for your friend, and you know, I'm doing for the MS stuff, and. Uh, but uh, I gotta do. I do have to say something funny though, because like when I first I did the first show, we raised a crap load of money, w- way more than I thought it would be, and people thought I was raising it for me. And, and oh. I'm like, what? What? They're like, because oh, you have MS, so, they thought it was just for you. Well, no, they, they they thought they thought like they thought I was raising it for like my medical bills and stuff like that, which isn't any, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what people are doing, but yeah, I, I wasn't wasn't i wasn't raising it for for i, I mean maybe i should have but no i mean <laughs> maybe I should have, no. Uh, but uh no i uh i did not i i wasn't uh but, but people were coming up to me at the show they're like i hope really helps this helps with your bills and like what no i don't my bills for the charity so um yeah for MS it, as a whole <laughs> yeah 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 me. like i mean if they find a cure that's gonna help me too but yeah, i'm not everybody. doing it I'm not sending it to my doctor, you know, like or, right. or, or my insurance company, whatever. Here you go, Doctor Joe. Uh, I had a concert. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, yeah it, 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 it's. Uh, but again, I mean, there's not. I, I wouldn't. I'd still support somebody that was doing it for a charity to to help themselves. Not everybody has yeah. good insurance. Not everybody. I got lucky enough that I got taken care of um, in a bunch of different ways, uh, but. Um, yeah, it's tough out there, you know, like uh, with your buddy uh, and, you know, like, you know, uh, cancer research is, they've been going at it for forever. I mean, the, cancer is one of the oldest diseases that's out there and, you know, we're still out there going, fuck, we don't know what to do. Yeah, unfortunately, he had, a, he had like a rare sinus cancer, like that they didn't oh. know that much about. Yeah. So it wasn't like one of the ones where they can just throw chemo on you and some pills and make it through this is like a serious you know it like went to his bones and stuff real nasty man like i yeah, feel so and, bad for his family and chemo and pills only go so far too i mean like yeah. i mean young old it doesn't matter it, it's oh. it's it's kind of like they talk about what if you actually think about what chemo is it's kind of barbaric but it's yeah. just the only thing that kind of like works i mean you're just basically frying you're yeah, frying man. the person and hoping the the cancer dies. I mean, yeah. it's, I know it's a lot more complicated than that, but you yeah. know, I mean, that's why your hair falls out. That's why all that stuff. And that's happens. what it boils down to, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just sad. I know rough. my dad had to go through it. He lost all his hair, had a big old scar on his head. You know, it, my it, mom's a two time survivor, so you know, wow. they always try to get involved in any of these things that I we didn't know that that's for wow. money that's for awesome, the research. Well, congrats on that because that's a tough one. My mom's up. My mom beat breast, yeah. breast cancer, um, but my dad, you know, brain cancer is a little, yeah, a little tough. Yeah. You know? Um. But yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's nice to hear those stories too of like my mom and your mom. You know, getting through it too. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, great yeah. to hear stories of people There's making both, it through. Know? Yeah. But you know that goes back to absolutely, yeah, yeah. and it goes back to what I was saying though too. It's like, um cancer is, is has been around for so long i mean uh even in in the oldest oldest um like uh, books that we have like um there's mentions of cancer like in e- ancient egypt like you know like uh, greece uh, uh in uh, like yeah. old hindu stuff like there's mentions of cancer everywhere so they've been they've been able to do stuff but you know when you say ms to somebody they're like so what's that like you know they, yeah. they don't yeah you know they, they don't know a lot about it and that that's part of what it, what these charities are good for too, is just to raise yeah. awareness, uh, makes people ask questions. I didn't know a lot about it before I got it. Um, so it's like, so yeah, a little bit of, you want to, you want to raise awareness too. And hopefully all these things do it. So, you know, yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've learned a lot about MS since I've been talking to you. I mean, I didn't really know anything about it. And I'm, you know, I've been looking at the charities. I've been looking stuff up and trying to share you know, charities and have people raise money and help and oh, yeah, you know, make a friend and you learn, you know what I mean? Yep. Just talk to people, ask questions. It's always good. So, uh, Christian, um, who shows you're thinking about writing an album? Um, anything else going on? We only got about three minutes left, bro. 
Um, that's that's more or less it, you know. Um, like I said, just playing playing some local stuff and and working on that working on that album. Um, but that's you know that's that's what we got going on for now. Good luck to you, man. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Thank you. Appreciate well, it. Maybe we should end this by saying, hey, everybody, remember that there is a way to donate for Jake Hirsch and his family. Um, please click the links. Donate a couple bucks. It doesn't matter. One, two, 20, 50, 100, 1,000, whatever you got. Um, <laughs> his family could definitely use it. There's a link to help feed them. There's a link for his medical bills. And there's the, ra the uh, raffle for the guitar. And then us and GMGT. We're going to be doing a fundraiser again soon here in the next couple of weeks. So definitely hit us up on that. This is Christian Glom from Ill Rendition. And that is Stevie Pandav. I hope I say it right every time. It's fine. From uh, Lucky Boys Confusion and Mr. Miz and the Infusions. Make sure you check them out, all, all of their bands, on your socials and on YouTube. Um, hey, everybody, have a good one. Thanks for having us. Peace.